Hi there, and thank you for watching this video on the vCenter plugin for Virialize Network Insight. My name is Martijn Smit, and I'm a technical marketing architect within the CMBU of VMware for Virialize Network Insight. And I want to congratulate the team on releasing version 2.0 of this plugin for vCenter. It has a bunch of new cool stuff in there, and I'm gonna take you through the installation and a quick look at the plugin itself and the new features as well. Before we get started, please make sure that you have internet access to download the Fling itself and PowerShell installed along with PowerCLI. So if you do not have PowerShell installed, you can go to this URL and PowerCLI is pretty much installed by ju just using this command. So once you have that in place, let's get started by downloading this, uh, this plugin. Okay, so download the plugin from this page and put it somewhere in your download. Now we're going to extract it because there's a script in here that we want to use. So there's the tech preview license agreement plus the PowerShell script that will install it. And now let's start and run it. So there are two operations and you need to give that with the operation flag and one is install and the other is uninstall. And there's security warning because it's unsigned, so just run this once. And then, whoops, it actually says that you have to connect your PowerShell Live to vCenter first. So I'm going to import the PowerShell Live module first, just to be safe. You can ignore that message. And then connect to the vCenter server where you want to install the plugin. I'm going to copy and paste this from a notepad. And then connect to the vCenter and provide the credentials. This has to be an administrator credential because we're installing something into the vCenter. So now we're connected to this vCenter where I'm going to install this plugin. And now I can run the script again. So just uh, go back, install it again, run it again once. So now it's detected that there's no installed plugin yet. It has downloaded the latest version from our AWS environment. Uh, if there is an upgrade in place, so if uh, you are upgrading the plugin from version one to two, then it'll say that you're upgrading it. But in this case, it's a fresh install. So we're gonna download the plugin from our uh, AWS S3 bucket. The SSL thumbprint is uh, mentioned here just so you can verify whether there's uh, it, it's the right URL and the right SSL certificate. And just press any key to continue here. So now it's already installed the plugin. One last thing that we want to do is we want to keep track of how many people use this uh, this plugin. So you, if you um, give us a yes here, then it'll phone home and tell us that you've installed the plugin. That's all. And then we're all done. And as you can see in the right hand side in the vCenter, we are already the, uh, have deployed the plugin. And we just need to refresh the browser to enable the actual plugin. We're also now done with the PowerShell. So I'm gonna maximize this, uh, the browser. And now you can actually see that we have the new menu item for Realize Network Insight. So click that and then we're welcomed with the, uh, the welcome wizard. So this needs the existing Realize Network Insight instance to configure. So we can need to connect to that VRNI instance. So if you start this wizard here, it'll ask you for the details. So first up is the Realize Network Insight credentials. We just need a member account here. So uh, input the hostname or IP address to the Realize Network Insight instance, and then give a member or an admin account, whatever you like, give the password and then test the connection. It'll test the SSL thumbprint and show you if it's the correct one. So you can check it and then we continue and we're successfully connected to VR9. And then the next part is to give the vCenter details because we're actually adding this vCenter 
via this plugin to VRNI as well. So here's the uh, vCenter IP address or hostname, and then a administrator username and password. And then test the connection to vCenter, and yay, we got it. And now we're uh, enabling NetFlow on this vCenter. So we can select a collector where this vCenter is going to be hosted on, the VRNI collector. And we want to enable uh, NetFlow or IPFix on this vCenter. So select the distributed virtual switch, click Next, and then it'll give you a summary of all the things that you've configured. And then you can hit Configure to start adding the vCenter as a data source to VRLIS Nutrican site. And it'll save the VRNI information into the plugin as well. So if you hit Refresh here, then the dashboard is built out for this vCenter with all of the information coming directly from VRLIS Network Inside. So there's a couple of new things in uh, version two, like this, uh, this time window selector, you can choose between one, seven or 30 days. The time window itself is shown on the top as well. And the rest is, um, <clears throat> the rest in the dashboard is pretty much the same. So we have the east-west flows, the internet flows, all the vMotion snapshots, and if there's NSX in the environment, the checklist rules that we check against, or fear night checks against. Then the, the uh, virtual machines accessing the internet, uh, the top five VLANs defined with all the, the VMs, the events, like any problems that there might be. And then the, uh, the traffic, um, the top five traffic uh, graphs, and you can use this graph to uh, see which uh, VMs are actively using internet uh, or connection, network connections the most, also by packet drops, and there's no packet drops unfortunately in this environment. So the top talker is also pretty interesting. It, it's pretty much the same top talkers as in VRNI itself, just focused on this vCenter. And one of the cool parts about version two is that it also supports the dark team. So if I switch to the dark team in vCenter, you will see that the plugin, the dashboard will actually conform to that uh, dark team. You can also see that the uh, the graphs are are kind of cool in this uh, this dark mode, still visible. So that's it for the dashboard. Let's have a look at something else that we added called the Launch in Context feature. So in this feature, you could uh, right click on a VM and host cluster or data center, and then open up its dashboard directly in Realize Network Insight, or look at the flow details, the traffic details for this uh, VM in this case. So if I open up the dashboard, it'll do a lookup into VRNI on what page it has to look up, and then open up a new tab with the dashboard for this specific VM. So all of the networking details, the topology is in here. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, this is a very small environment, so there's no real physical elements in, in, in the environment. Um, and I can do the same thing for the traffic details. So if I open up that one, it'll open up a new tab with all of the flows for that specific VM. So you can see the, um, the, the source destination, all of the context that Fear and I collects the services, the protocols, etc. And not only can you do that for the VMs, you can do that for the hosts as well. So see all of the host traffic or the dashboard. Same goes for the cluster, or even if you want to see the entire data center, you can also open up the traffic details for the entire data center. And it'll just look up all of the flows that happen within that vCenter data center using that uh, vCenter that we've added via the uh, the plugin. So one thing that I want to show you is that if you look at the data sources within VR9, this is the where the vCenter has been added to VR9. And it also adds a note that it was actually added by the vSphere plugin um, in this VR9. So that was a quick look at how the vCenter plugin for Realize Network Inside works and how to set it up. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, I hope. Have fun using this. Thank you very much.